Guys, this is my full review of Rootbox on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. And I know it has been a while, I'm sorry. I've been going through a lot of stuff in my house. But I'm back to making videos. They should be out every day or so, give or take. But let's start off with this awesome ROM on the Galaxy Note 2. Now, first off, this is AOSP based. So you have all the AOSP goodness of 4.2.1. And it has, like, I think two or three bugs, which the Bluetooth is still a little bit buggy, but you guys should probably know that by now. And, sorry, I'm kind of sick. And also, like, in, in the call, like, it kind of echoes a little bit, but it's not too bad. I mean, I'd rarely make a phone call, like, probably once a month or so, so it doesn't bother me as much as it may, you know, you guys. But let's go ahead and get started. So this is a mixture of AOKP, Cyanogen Mod, and also Paranoid Android. Now, it's not the full Paranoid Android experience, but it's the DPI, like how you can change the... You know, density of every app that you have so if you want tablet mode or something like that you can change that in this ROM which is a really neat feature so ROM control I have been through ROM control a lot so I'm not going to go through all of these features but ROM control lets you customize a lot about your phone that is why I love that they include AOKP in this ROM personally I don't really go to a ROM that does not have AOKP so it's, you know, but let's just, I'm just going to skim through these. I'm not going to go through every single one, but so this is where you can, you know, customize your boot animation. If you don't like the one that comes with it, which I think it looks sweet, you can change it right there. Or if you don't want one at all, just disable it. Let me see if I can bring this closer. There we go. So you guys can see it a little bit better. Now you can choose your notification background. You can choose the custom carrier label, which... Sorry, it's kind of a big phone, but you see it says Brandon's Note 2. I would refocus it, but then I'd have to refocus it again back here, so I'm not going to. But. So, And then you can show notification count. What this means is that if you have more than one Gmail, there will be a little number next to it in, you know, in your notification bar, of course. And you have it where it vibrates when you slide your finger down and expand them. You can mess with transparency settings, which AOKP actually just added this. And I'm really surprised that it has already made its way into this ROM, which I congrats to the devs on that, because that is awesome. What this lets you do is set the transparency of your status bar and your navigation bar, which I have mine turned off, but if you have it turned on, you can have everything to where it's fully transparent. So that's pretty sweet. If you don't know what transparent means, it means you can see through it. <laughs> Just a little heads up. Now, the kill all button in the recent RAM bar, that is right here, which you see the recent RAM bar up there and the kill all right there. See, it just killed all my applications, which I was in settings, but it just kind of killed it. So let's go back. Let's go back down. And UI mode, this is pretty neat because this is one of the reasons why you don't really need Paranoid Android, like all of its features, because you can kind of choose here. You can put phablet, tablet, or phone mode, which is pretty nice, and allow 180 degrees rotation. Now the dual panel is of course in settings where you see you know, on the left you'll see these and then the right you'll see what you select. Pretty neat. Lock screen. I'm not going to go through these you know, that much either but you can have the lock screen battery percentage. You can hide the little hints, you know the little bars that show up on the side which I'll actually show you guys right now. And you see that you can also turn on the CRT animation which is pretty neat. And see the little bars is when you see the little white, white outline. That, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, that is the uh, page hint. And then I have it set to where they're expanded, and if I long press on that, it, uh, it unlocks it. You can select all widgets or unlimited widgets. So, like the widgets on your home screen that aren't meant for the lock screen. Like, say you have a YouTube widget. That's not meant for the lock screen, but you can add it thanks to that, which is pretty neat. Power menu, nothing too special. You can add the torch toggle, airplane, navigation bar toggle. And also, he fixed the torch toggle in the latest update, which is today's update. <laughs> now, navigation bar, you guys should know what this is by now. You can turn it on. You can set custom navigation buttons. You can colorize. That's a pretty neat feature. I haven't seen that before in AOKP. In case you guys are wondering, I've been on this ROM for about a week and a half, two weeks. 
like I've been on this ROM a while, but I just flashed today's update because it was released today. But you can have five or seven buttons, so you can customize the buttons, you can customize the icon, and you can have custom apps, notifications, you can have a power toggle. So you can basically have anything you want on the navigation bar. So if, if I go to enable it, it will restart my system UI, and you see it's right there. And thanks to the theme I'm running, it has like a little outline on it, which looks pretty nice to me. So if you don't really like the, you know, if you don't like to ha apply themes, then you won't, you'll just have the simple black on it. But there's nothing really wrong with that either, so it's fine. Alright, sorry about that, my camera kind of stopped recording right there. But what I just went through is I just disabled those. Now the arrow keys is when you have a left and a right arrow key, and you can just change, you know, the keyboard. Like you can change between the letters. You guys, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now the navigation bar ring is when you press and hold on a button and you drag it up and it, it goes to where you can select up to five shortcuts and you, you can also enable a long press on those so you can technically have up to ten which is pretty neat and let's go back now under battery this is where you can enable your battery bar and you can also you know select your battery bar your battery icon style and you see that I have the battery the circle mod because I think that the circle mod looks pretty cool but let's go back now under clock, this is where you can have your center clock, the AM, PM, stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. I mean, if you don't like your clock in the center, you can just disable that. And also the AM, PM. See how I have my AM, PM right there next to my... Get it focused. There we go. See how I have the day of the week and the AM, PM. You can select those. If you don't want those to show, then just select don't show. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And also, if you click on the clock in the status bar, it can take you to a custom application. See, I have mine where it takes me to my alarms because I'm still in high school, so I need to go to my alarms really quickly. Now, signal. This is, I don't really get into this, but see the bars up there? You can change the bars to where they're actually text. Now, I don't really understand the DBMs and all that, so I don't really mess with that, but. Now, in, enable toggles. This is where it gets kind of fun. See, you can choose all these toggles. Not really going to go through them all, but. You have nav bar, auto hide, quiet hours, profile, power menu. Some of the some are the uh, new ones. Now he did fix the torch toggle, so it doesn't break camera. I heard, so it's pretty neat. Now the holo, holo light and holo dark. It's I mean you guys should understand this. It's rather or not you know the background is white or the background is black. So slide there. So it's whether or not the background is black or white. That's why it's called a holo white. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean light. Sorry, my bad. Let's just go back. You can choose the per row too. As you've seen, I have the, I have the four per row because, you know, the Note 2 is a pretty big device. So, I mean, you can have, you know, five in a row and you can still easy, easily access all the toggles without any issues. Vibrations is where you can set custom vibrations for when you get a call. If you go under sound, this is where you can enable your volume your volume panel. So when I hit the volume up, I can hit settings right here. And I can customize the volume for every single app on here. Or you know, like my alarms, my calling, stuff like that. And also LED is this where you can customize the LED color for each individual app or for all you know apps together. So let's go back. That was a mouthful, I'm sorry. Now, themes, this is your theme chooser, of course. If you guys don't know what theme chooser is and you're on an AOSP ROM, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is where you can apply custom themes that fully change the UI of your phone. So, as you see, I'm using the red edge right now. And my icons are all themed. My status bar is themed. Everything is themed, you know, for this specific theme. Now, if you get a more simple theme, like, say, this, it won't theme all apps or, you know, stuff like that, but... So under performance control, this is basically like set CPU. So you can, you know, apply some governors. You can mess with the. Let's just go back because I don't really mess with that. I just kind of mess with the over overclocking. Now I do go to 1.8 gigahertz and I kind of leave it there because it, I mean it's it go, it does pretty good. It does pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it does pretty good. My bad. Now under device options, you can mess with HSPA. Now, this is where you can kind of mess with the colors of your screen also. So you see the scenario, the mode, the negative mode. I don't really, 
recommend putting in negative because everything is just kind of inverted. LED fading, I find that I like the brightness better because when it fades, it looks kind of weird. Like if you don't try it out, let me know because it may just be me, but it looks kind of weird when you enable it. But let's go back. Now for the touch keys, this is if you want to enable the backlight and also your vibrator intensity. Profiles is a cyanogen mod thing where you can have custom profiles for work, school, home, stuff like that. Now, finally, the root box settings, because this ROM is root box, right? Now, under clock, this is where you can mess with the Cronus clock widget, which if you guys have ever flashed cyanogen mod, I'm pretty sure you know, you know what to expect here. You can turn on your weather, you can turn on your calendar events, everything like that. What I find that's pretty neat you can select a custom app for when you plug in your headphones. Now, I had it to where it, you know, goes to play music, but for some reason, like, even after I had my headphones and I hit home when the app opened and I was in YouTube, it would open up the music player while I was in YouTube because I still had my headphones in. Now, I'm not sure why it does that, but, I mean, it may not bother you, but volume adjust sound. Play sound when adjusting volume with hard keys. I disabled that because when I'm hitting volume up and it's like 3 a.m. in the morning, I don't want my phone to do like the little uh, ding type thing. So, Not lock screen targets, pretty self-explanatory. You see that I do have Twitter right there. You can select up to five, by the way. Well, four because you have to have the unlock right there. But Not lock screen shortcuts. You can select, you just got to add from the list. See that little add button down there. You can also reset. This is from Paranoid Android. I think it's pretty neat, but they need to kind of do, what's it called? They need to kind of do like a little bit more with it. And what I mean by that is that, see, that's it. There's just small little icons that just kind of sit up there. Refocus it. But they just kind of sit there. I mean, when you tap on it, it goes to say, the phone, probably shouldn't throw this out there. I don't care if you really call them or not, but... But see, it goes to the phone. But I mean, they, they need to like, let you customize it more. I mean, you can change the icon and all, but they just sit there. <laughs> no offense. I mean, it, it is pretty neat, but let's just keep going. Screen security is where you mess with if you want to have a pattern lock or you know anything like that. So I'm not really going to go too much into that. Sorry. I need to fix that. Now, Pi controls. This is what a lot of you guys are interested in. So I'm just going to head right into it. This does have Pi, as you see right here. You can, mess, you can mess with the trigger size. So if you go in here, I just kind of leave it at default. And when I slide in, this is Pi. You can go back, home, recent, search. And if you bring it out here, you can go to your notifications. So you see it pulls in my little uh, quick toggles right there. Go away. And, oops, I hit it back, I guess. Pi style, you can have it to where it's quick or it's kind of slow, like when it pulls up. Let me go back to the default. I have, I have an auto, see how it's kind of slow loading a little bit right there? I have an auto box, so it's kind of hard to get to it, but it still works. Now, the gap from the screen, you can, you know, I'm just going to set it to big so you guys can see. That is the kind of big gap, I guess it's called. And then center pie, and... Uh, if you guys can tell, I'm not really a big fan of Pi. Now, if I'm on something like the Galaxy Nexus, I can see using that. But I'm on the Galaxy Note, which has, you know, the hardware keys. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal for me, honestly. But, I mean, it's still nice that we have this feature for those that do want it. So, now, expand desktop. I'll long press here. This is just where you can expand the desktop. So, you see, if you had the navigation bar, it gets rid of that also, but... You don't have your status bar, you don't have your navigation bar, so you you rely on Pi for everything. So, I mean, it's pretty neat. Hold back to kill, I love that feature, because if, if I need to kill an app that's stuck, like Chrome, just hold back and it kills it. CRT off and on is like an older TV kind of effect. See that right there? And see it when it turns on. So, I mean, it's pretty neat features. Now, hardware keys, this is why I love CyanogenMod. You can enable custom actions. So if, if I long press on the home key, of course it goes to my recent apps. But if I long press on the menu key, it it you know turns on my torch. So if, if I'm in need to really use my torch like right then and there, I can easily use it 
without having to like go into the app or pull down my you know notification bar or anything like that. Now button actions, this is for when your screen is locked. So you see, I have long press on the back button for the next song because it's on the right. For long press on home, it plays or pauses it. And for the menu, it's previous because, you know, it's on the left, so it kind of goes previous. You don't have to set it up like that, but I think it's pretty neat. So let's go back. And this is where you can mess with your kind of paranoid Android-esque kind of settings. It's not really, but it's still basically the same thing. So say I want... Go down to Gmail. If I want Gmail in tablet mode, this is just where I can mess with the settings to in, to change the DPI. If you want it full tablet mode, put it at 120. If you want kind of phablet kind of mode, I'd put it at about 200 maybe. Around there. But not really much else in settings. There is the about root box where you can donate to your developers, which I really recommend you doing. Root box does involve include some custom wallpapers. Now these are pulled from the internet so if you don't have an internet connection you're not going to be able to see these. But they have a lot. And so talk about the negatives. Let's go into my battery life because I've been I unplugged my phone about five, five or so. Get my status bar. So actually it was about three. I want to say three. So let's go let's just go down to battery and see. So you see 1 hour and 20 minutes, so yeah, it was about 5. Screen, screen on time is 50 minutes, and I'm already at 73%. So battery life on AOSP kind of sucks. I mean, it's not the worst, but it's not touch with battery where I'm pulling through the day. So, I mean, it's nothing to complain about, but my extended battery, it can make me through the day because it's twice the size of this one, but, you know. And for the Bluetooth issues... I don't use Bluetooth, so they don't bother me. <laughs> and for the in-call audio, like I said, I probably call somebody once a month. Now, if I'm if I'm calling somebody important, like say to get a job, <laughs> that's when I'd be kind of worried. But I'm gonna leave you guys with this awesome boot animation. If you have any questions or anything like that, just leave a comment below, and I'll be happy to answer your comment. If you, you know, have any questions about anything else, you want to see any type of ROMs reviewed or you know, anything like that, just leave a comment below letting me know. If, if you guys like this video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up because it lets me know that you like my video, that you want to see more of my videos. And also, if you want to see more videos on this phone, Galaxy Note 2, Galaxy S3, Galaxy Nexus, soon to be Nexus 4, HTC Incredible 2, which I need to touch that phone in about two months. <laughs> um, HCC HD2 which is a legend and just ignore the YouTube but yeah I'll see you guys in the next video